application of Newton's first law of motion in our daily life. Before starting the lecture, click on the subscribe button and get access to our hundred of conceptual videos for free. To learn the applications of Newton's first law of motion, you must learn that what is Newton's first law of motion. Newton's first law of motion states two very important points. Firstly, Newton's law states that if the net external force on the body is zero or balanced, secondly, he states then this body will remain at rest or in uniform motion. Remember that when the net external force is zero, then acceleration will not produce an N object. Now let me teach you a very simple application of Newton's first law of motion. Let's consider that there are few books on the table. Now these books experience downward force of the gravity or downward force of the earth. At the same time, the table exerts upward force or normal force on these books. To simplify it further, we can say that if the downward force of the earth on these books is 100 Newton, then the upward force or normal force of the table on these books is also 100 Newton. Hence, the downward force and upward force on these books are the same. The net external force on these books is zero. Thus, these books remains at rest according to Newton's first law of motion. Remember that I usually call and teach to my students that Newton's first law of motion is also known as a law of balanced forces. Now the second application of Newton's first law of motion is the jumping or free fall of paratrooper. When paratrooper jump off, initially the downward force of gravity on the paratrooper is very high. Hence this downward force produces acceleration in this paratrooper. As a result, the paratrooper accelerates towards the earth center. But at the same time, this paratrooper experiences an upward force of air resistance or air friction. Now this paratrooper is under the action of two forces, the downward force of the earth and the air resistance. But the downward force of the earth is greater than the air resistance, due to which this paratrooper accelerates toward the center of the earth. When this paratrooper opens the parachute, something interesting happens. This parachute increases the surface area for this paratrooper. Thus, the air resistance on the paratrooper becomes increasing as the paratrooper falls toward the earth. A time comes when the downward force of the earth and the upward force of the air or air resistance becomes equal. As a result, paratrooper starts falling with uniform velocity towards the earth and execute its journey safely. Remember that the uniform velocity of the paratrooper is also known as a terminal velocity. Now here comes the most interesting and difficult question of this lecture. When the downward force or the upward force on the paratrooper becomes equal, then why this paratrooper doesn't stay up in the air or why this paratrooper doesn't move in upward direction? Because both the downward force and the upward force are equal. Can you guess the answer? Let me explain it for you. As we know that both the forces are equal on the paratrooper, but the paratrooper falls downward. It is due to inertia. Now what is inertia? Inertia is the natural tendency of an object to maintain its initial state of rest or initial state of uniform motion. Here, initially, the paratrooper was in motion in downward direction. When the downward force and upward force becomes equal, here appears the black ghost of inertia. 
and it tells the paratrooper initially you were in downward motion so again you have to be in downward motion therefore this poor paratroopers fall with terminal velocity in downward direction due to inertia the third application of newton's first law of motion in our daily life is falling of fruits from any tree when you shake a tree usually fruits fall down the tree initially this fruit is at rest because the downward force of the earth and the upward force of leaf stick is equal the net external force on this fruit is zero that's why this fruit is at rest the inertia of this fruit will try its best to keep this fruit at rest now when you shake the tree this will disturb the net external force on this fruit or the net external force wouldn't be equal hence the fruit will be separated from the tree and it will stay here because of inertia now here comes another force or downward force of the earth which pulls down this fruit towards the earth center and it falls down lastly when you travel in a car and your car suddenly apply a brake you feel a forward jerk a forward push it is because initially you were in motion in this direction now the inertia of your body will try its best to maintain your state of motion in this direction when the car suddenly apply brake your inertia wants that you should maintain your state of motion in this direction as a result you feel forward force a forward push that's why newton's first law of motion is also known as a law of inertia these are all about the applications of newton's first law of motion in our daily life I hope that you have learned all these daily life examples of Newton's first law of motion. Thank you very much for watching this lecture.